These are the future of fat loss. And the science has come a long way. In the 1930s, scientists developed 2,4-dinitrophenol, which was then used as a yellow industrial dye, a TNT precursor, and a fat loss drug. And it worked incredibly well because it uncoupled all the mitochondria in your body right up to the point that it turned your body into an easy bake oven and cooked all your internal organs. The 40s and 50s saw the rise of the rainbow pill which was an amphetamine, thyroid hormone, laxative, diuretic, and heart medication all rolled into one. Yikes. What an awful way to die. Fast forward to current day, and they might have actually done it. And there's one thing I love about the bodybuilding community, and it's that while the FDA and most rational people need a phase three trial to feel comfortable about a drug, not us. If you get a couple fat body positive rats to lose some weight, screw it. I'll try it. So while the general population is being spoon fed billion dollar pharmaceuticals that are side effect ridden and usually two to three generations behind, bodybuilders run their own clinical trials. So that's what we're going over today. Let's start this off by going over some of the more recent advancements made with GLP-1s. Most people think it all started with semaglutide, but that actually wasn't the first. It had some predecessors, but they all kind of sucked. Sema was the first one to come along that cracked double digit weight loss. It's really what started this revolution and gave all the scientists a slight chop. Basically what they did is took the naturally occurring GLP-1, which is mostly secreted in your colon and a tiny amount in the tail end of your small intestine, added a lab crate amino acid so enzymes couldn't chew it up, and bolted on a long chain fatty acid so it could actually ride on the albumin in your blood and give it a half life of six to seven days. But if you've ever taken it, then you've ran into its biggest drawback. Since the main driver is appetite suppression and delayed gastric emptying, eventually you find yourself sitting looking at your ground turkey and throwing up in your mouth. Uh -huh. You can get real nauseous. Then terzepatide entered the chat, a dual GIP GLP-1 receptor agonist, this time built on a modified GIP backbone with a few GLP-1 tweaks. Think of GIP as little gut messengers that supercharge glucose-triggered insulin release and help speed up blood sugar control post-meal. It's like the bathroom buddy you had in elementary school that kept you from getting diddled, but also got you in trouble because he challenged you to a game of shit stacking. I don't think that analogy worked. The reason it's so important is because the faster the insulin pulse goes back to baseline, the sooner we can switch from storing fat to burning it, which made this GLP-1 king for a while until this mutated fish baby came along. Kyle had me use that Retitrutide, Retitrutide, and it, it worked. Retitrutide is a triple agonist. GIP, GLP, and glucagon. By hitting that glucagon receptor, it tells your liver, instead of storing fuel, I want you to burn it, which increases your overall energy expenditure. You burn more calories. In terms of its effectiveness, there's very few results from clinical trials yet because they're mostly still in stage two or the beginning of stage three. This is the only figure I found. Despite that, it's still probably the most prevalent fat loss drug in the bodybuilding community. You know how many times I've crawled up and down on this stupid thing? But I think the most important question is how much lean mass are we gonna lose by taking some of these therapeutics? Just sounded better than research grade peptides. That's kind of dirty. If we look at the fat to lean mass loss percentages of all the studies done so far, they're not, they're not great. But we have to remember these are all done on my 600 pound lifers, diabetes. As any of my elementary school teachers would tell you, I'm a bit of a fuck. So obviously I've tried all of them. The most recent trial I did on myself was with Retitrutide, where I titrated up to four milligrams and after a few months got my DEXA scan redone and I lost 16.6 .6 pounds of fat. Yes! Which is awesome. But it showed I lost 6.4 pounds of lean mass. Shit! Which sucks. That means of all the weight I lost, 38% of it was lean mass. Normally this would piss me off, but after you read James Krieger's article that compares the DEXA versus the four compartment model, which is the gold standard and shows that even to athletic populations, the DEXA can be wildly off, you give less fucks. I put a lot more weight into before and afters. You can see in my before picture exactly what I was thinking. You're a big, fat, stupid piece of shit. Versus my after, all right, you're a little less fat, but still, stupid piece of shit, good job. I think what's really exciting is each generation is getting progressively better at preserving lean mass and it's only gonna get better from here. One thing I didn't realize until I started researching for this video is the true benefits of this one 
only start to kick in above four milligrams. At those higher doses is when the glucagon receptor leg really kicks in, tells your liver to stop storing and start burning. When it does, it mainly pulls in easy to convert amino acids like alanine, asparagine, and serine from your blood. So instead of the liver indiscriminately pulling from our body's entire amino acid pool, which is where catabolism comes into play, it mostly focuses on those non-essential amino acids, which means in theory, we should be able to replace those with food and not worry about our precious, precious muscle. If the fear of losing muscle is one of the main reasons you're not taking these and you're actually a great candidate, you're somebody who hasn't seen their prick in years. You look down and all you see is the horizon, fat earth. Then just do what I'm gonna do going forward, which is increase the protein and make sure the calorie deficit comes from an increased energy expenditure. So a high flux calorie deficit. The sad truth is though, when you look at the research around traditional exercise and calorie restriction without these, it's not great, it's actually kind of shitty. Unless you are taking super physiological doses of testosterone or a woman. And there's also benefits to these drugs that I don't think people highlight enough, like their cardioprotective effects, and my personal favorite, the way they can reduce addictive behaviors. Because the level that Larry Wheels is at, death gripping it to cam models, I'm like that, but with food. There's a real angry fat kid deep down inside me. And he wants out. The next supplement we should talk about is SLUPP332 because it's a great example of bodybuilders doing the most. This thing is still in preclinical trials, meaning there's no human trials. It's all still a bunch of fat rats, but if you ask any coach to competitors, whether it's figure fitness bodybuilding, this plus Retta is one of their go-to stacks. And this little bastard, is fascinating. I'm gonna try to explain this as simply as possible because to fully understand how this works, it will hurt your brain. SLU-PP332 is a synthetic exercise mimetic that latches onto all three estrogen-related receptors and pushes their metabolic gene program into overdrive. I told you it was fucking hard to understand. And you might be wondering, what the hell does that mean? Hold on, let me show you. Normally to reap the benefits of the AMPK signaling cascade, your husky self is gonna have to huff and puff your way through some aerobic training. But what SLU does is takes its little marshmallow prick and smashes it into all the estrogen related receptors, which then builds more mitochondria, which causes you to burn more fat. So what we have here is the closest thing that scientists have ever come to exercise in a pill. And again, the frustrating, oh. Whoa. Again, the frustrating part about this one is there are no results to show. There's no human trials, so the best you get is anecdotal experiences from bros like myself who've turned their body into a adult chemistry kit that say, seems like it works. At the very least, just keep it on your radar because you'll see a lot more about it in the near future. Out of everything though, this is what I'm most excited about. Mitochondrial open reading frame of the 12S RNA type C. It too is an exercise mimetic. And the easiest way to think about it, it is the oh shit button button for your cells. When you're under stress, fasting, exercising, oxygen depletion, MOTC runs to the nucleus of the cell to boost energy production, burn more fat, and reduce oxidative damage. And the one human trial so far has shown some real benefits, reducing ALT, AST, and glucose. But honestly, I don't really give two shits about those effects. That's not what I'm excited about. I have sleep apnea, and I do everything you can think of to get restorative sleep. I use a nose strip, I tape my mouth, I wear a CPAP, I sleep on an eight sleep, and no matter what my sleep score says, I still wake up feeling like a bag of dicks. So the fact that one study found that MOTC levels were correlated with the severity of individual sleep apnea got me excited enough to try it. And I could just be an idiot and it's all the placebo effect, but I feel like it's making a difference. This will only make sense if you have sleep apnea, but constantly feeling like you're breathing into a paper bag or walking around being incredibly tired because you're basically just oxygen depleted all day, I feel that a lot less. So it might work, it's worth a shot. I've seen a lot of complaints in the comments that these videos are getting way too long. If enough people find this interesting, I'll make a part two going over other peptides that are just as awesome. I don't wanna watch a 10 minute video either. The next video on the channel is gonna be how to perfectly pair training for strength with hypertrophy, which means there's gonna be a program that drops as well. So make sure you're subscribed, click that little bell. And if you suck at training and you can't wait another week, buy one of the other programs, they're all only 20 bucks.